Okay, we're back. And I have just mixed a um, darker mixture of the same color that um, the purple I've added paints gray to it. And I'm just pushing these darks. So I'm just going in and doing some more layering here and softening as I go. So there's not anything too harsh, but I do want some of those darker darks like this to pop these out. And I'm pretty much just um, going in and putting darks where I think darks need to be. And it does require a good bit of concentration to do this. If you want that uh, grape to pop forward, you have to darken what's behind it. I think we'll move this one to the rear a bit. See how it makes this one come forward. Make this one even darker. And then we have a multi-layered effect going on here. painting with the form of whatever you're painting. Then I'll just go back in and soften that so we have no hard edges in that pretty little apple. with that. So let's get over here on this one. And you notice I did not wet the uh, apple ahead of time this time. Sometimes I do and sometimes I just use a washi mitt uh, mixture like this to get that look because it's very wet. You just go back in and I'm going to have to lift that back out. Alright, that's very pretty. I like that. And I'm going to have to lift out that little place right here. Be being careful not to. Because that was part of that. Alright, so I think now we'll go in and do our stems. And I think I will do that with um, this little number four little Cornell brush right here and a little burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is such a wonderful earthy color and everywhere that um, we have these little knobby things on these grapes. Tips, the tips on the grapes. 
assim. Alright, I'm back and I've decided I'm going to uh, add another layer to the dark background. And the way I do this black is basically I've made this, um, this black mixture and I just layer over it, always keeping a wet edge. If you keep a wet edge down here, you can go in the drier areas up here and um, you won't get a hard edge because you want this background very soft. And I just go in here, always touching the wet area that's down here. That's how you get a smooth wash with, this, with these darks. And I'm going back over this. Even though I don't recommend going back over it, as long as it's still wet, you've got time to go in there. And if you want a really dark background, you may have to do this four, five, six times to get a really dark, to get a true black. Or, you know, if you wanted to just use a black, you could go in with ivory black. Well, I don't use ivory black, but um, carbon black maybe. Ivory black is made out of animal bones, so I don't use ivory black. But you can go in it with carbon black. The problem with blacks that you that are out of the tube is they tend to be a little flat and if you mix your own blacks they tend to be more vibrant and more alive okay so that's I would just keep layering this until it was dark as dark as I wanted it to be and when you're making up blacks always make enough so that you don't have to go back and remake it because it is very hard to get the same color but it really if you go over the whole thing it doesn't really matter you could actually go back in here with a dark blue or a dark green if you wanted to or a violet over this dark background it would be, it would be very pretty you don't a lot of people don't like black backgrounds i'm one of those people i just like them because i think they show off whatever you're painting so beautifully. So let's see if I have enough of a mixture here. And I use a fairly, this is a, a Perla 14, a Skoda Perla number 14, it's a synthetic. It holds a lot of water, but it uh, has a very sharp point. So I can just go in here with this. Just don't take too long because you don't want it drying where they meet. That's how you get streaks. Like right here. If I were to let that dry. So I just always scrub it back in. Like that. And I actually am gonna have to make up some more. I could probably make it with this. But I'll show you how to make a dark anyway. So let's take ultramarine blue. And let's take some pipe red. And you see I use the entire <laughs> palette to do this. So you got a beautiful maroon there. So then I would add the yellow. And to get a black, you just have to keep mixing the primaries. There are many different ways to get blacks. You can mix complements. You can mix blue and um, orange and get a nice black. You can mix, it's, 
They say you can mix red and green, but I always get a brown when I mix red and green. See, like we're pushing this now to the brown side, so I need a lot. And this, I'm wasting a lot of paint here. I wouldn't normally do this, but just to show you. See, we're getting darker now. Can you see that? So we're getting into that dark darkness we need. So let's see what we've got. Now this is a bit greener. So that's gonna be interesting. So let's put, let's get, um, to counterbalance the green, of course, you would have to add red. And that's too much red. So again, I'm, I would save this mixture generally. When I make a dark, I usually save that dark. I'm going to go ahead and go with this and put some variation in this uh, background. Push it back. There we go. That's better. Still not it. That's better. It'll, have, it'll be slightly different, but that's, you know, there's no problem. That gave us a kind of a very, actually very, that's a very pretty dark right there. I actually like that. And I'm going to drop this in really quickly here. Keeping both edges wet. And if you're, if you're painting and you don't have a nice division where you can stop and work on a section, this is pretty much how you have to do it. You have to keep it all going at once. moving so we'll end up with a cooler background down here and a warmer background up here which should be kind of uh, interesting and actually very pretty so don't think that you can't layer that it has to be all the same color every every layer has to be the same color because it really does not it actually makes for more interesting painting if they aren't the same so there you go. So see, we've got this beautiful warm up here, which I really like that red right there. And I'm gonna go into some of these little places and add a little bit of that warmer red on the background in there. Just so that it blends in. And I don't want that button cut out, so I'll just always dab that. Makes it softer just to push those on um, those little stems forward a little bit and just add a little more darks here and there oh I'm liking that Dark now. I'm quite pleased with that. So I'm gonna let that dry. Mm -hmm. 